No one would have believed in early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. Yet, across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded our planet with envious eyes, and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. Uh, Mr. Freeman? Yes, son, what is it? Uh, wrong script, sir. Why, bless my name. <laughs> I was reading War of the Worlds. Now, where's that other one? Ah, there it is. Great! Take it away, Mr. Freeman! As we watched the annual journey of Emperor Penguins, they march, single file, to their breeding ground. We observe... Uh, sir? I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Ah, here it is. Murder at Nile Manor, Episode 1. It was the night before Christmas. The snow was covering the ground like a thick white blanket. Actually, it wasn't really that cold being in Cairo and all, but one could almost feel the spirit of the season in the air. The Nile FM Christmas party was in full swing. And yet something wasn't quite right. Excuse me! <clears throat> What's going on? What are you doing? I'm the narrator. I was hired for this gig. Now listen here, sir. Zip it, Azim. I'm in charge now. Mr. Freeman, you are a great actor. If you've got a play about a friendly dolphin or a day in a life of a raindrop, but what you've got here is a murder mystery. I can deliver action, suspense, tension, anxiety, and anticipation. Go on. Thank you. All seemed to be going well at the Nile FM Christmas party, and yet something wasn't quite right. Hey, they're fading me out. They're fading me out. Okay, dumb cop, what do we got here? A uh, double quadruple homicide, Chief. A double quadruple homicide? What does that mean? It means two times four dead bodies, sir. You mean eight dead bodies? Uh, exactly, sir. Why didn't you just say eight dead bodies, you idiot? I, I just wanted to sound smart, sir. Heck, the bite from the turkey sandwich I just had for dinner is smarter than you. Get over it. I'm uh, sorry, sir. So, celebrity Christmas party gone sour, eh? Eight dead bodies, each one disposed of in a matter befitting their persona. I think the killer's a genius, sir. Hey, I'll be the one to hand out genius labels around here, capiche? Suspect is male, organized and angry, but his anger is very controlled. He likes reading and taking long walks by the sea. His favorite food is kushery. Wow, well, sir, how did you know all that? Hey, I've been doing this way before you were creaming your diapers and begging milk from your mama's balloons. Do we have any suspects? The rest of the party guests? Yeah, we kept them in the upstairs drawing room. All right, get me a coffee and tell my wife I'm not coming home. This is gonna be a long night. Oh, it's me. Uh, meanwhile, in the upstairs drawing room, the party guests are getting a little nervous. <laughs> Silence, everyone. Now I see that you're all a little nervous. Yes, <laughs> the police are here now, and I can assure you, speaking as a man of uniform, we are trained to handle the most delicate of situations. What? I remember when I was a lad back in Her Majesty's service, we always knew how to handle ourselves. If you know what I mean. Oh, stop that. You make me so jealous when you talk about your past girlfriends. But Belinda, you know you're the only one for me. And besides, that was over 40 years ago. You weren't even born back then. Not for another 20 years, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? I simply have no idea. <laughs> Colonel Green, I'm sure we're all suspects here. Well, don't look at me, Stella. I was outside for most of the time feeding the reindeer. Poor little thing looked so cold and hungry. I doubt that, Mr. De Suave. According to my in-depth knowledge of the region, there are no reindeer here in Egypt, and even if there were, they certainly wouldn't be that cold. I was feeding some sort of creature, and it was cold, okay? And besides, Professor Nutty, you're the history and geography teacher. What would you know about countries and regions? Uh, everything. I should have gone to Spielberg's party if I was invited. Yo, Missy Elliott know that right now we be fried. But y'all gotta learn how to take a chill pill, you know what I'm saying? What? I meant that in light of the current circumstances, one must learn to keep one's cool and not panic. Do you understand? Oh. Why didn't you say that earlier? Professor Nutty, I'm Missy Elliott, a hip-hop diva, and therefore I'm expected to speak in a certain manner because I've been stereotyped to do so. Oh, I see. Carry on, then. For shizzle. <laughs> The police inspectors are here to see you, masters. Who are you? I am Igor, the butler of Nile Manor. Since when does Nile Manor have a butler? Since the moment this story turned from an ordinary play into a murder mystery. 
I guess that explains all the scary music. Exactly, masters. Now, may I present to you Chief Inspector McClue and Officer Dumcop. Ladies and gentlemen, we have quite a situation here. Officer Dumcop and I wish to ask you a few questions. Dumcop? Um, yeah, who made this shrimp cocktail? Oh, forget about it. Okay, someone tell me what the heck happened here. You, uh, Miss Bell? Well, it all started round about quarter to ten. The party was swinging and everything was going great. So I said to Tom Cruise, Tommy Darling, I can't have an affair with you unless you divorce that pasty face, Nicole. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> oh, look! It's Paris Hilton! Ugh. Oh, hi, everybody! I can't stand her. Why should she be a big star and not me? Her and that undernourished rat she calls a dog. Happy Christmas! Paris! Mwah. What brings you here? Like, I was supposed to go to Spielberg's party in L.A., but, like, my private jet just so had a technical problem. With you in it, I hope. Oh, Stella, like, you're unbelievable. You're still bitter over that incident in Malibu? Get over it. Like, who knows you might have been a big star again if I hadn't blown everyone away with my awesome singing voice. La, 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 la. Now listen here, broomstick. You stole that record deal from me. <clears throat> oh, I'm Belinda, by the way. Belinda Bell. Hey, do you want to hear my Christmas single? It's like totally rad. It's called Daddy's Left Me a Hotel. La, 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 la. Daddy gave me the key because he loves me. <laughs> That's her new single? Sheesh. No, Stella. Jeez. Dad. It was so horrible. Yeah, right. Well, really. Listen, Guts. Guilty's written all over your face. You had motive. You hated her for what she did to you. Oh, come on. Everybody hates Paris Hilton. Don't you? Well, of course I do. I mean, I, I, I mean, no. Th that's beside the point. Look, what happened next? There she was. Lying there motionless, her and her rat dog. <laughs> Very good. You know, for a washed up movie star, you're quite an actress. What do you mean? Got the crying act, lady. I know fake tears when I see them. It was you, wasn't it? You poisoned her lipstick. No, I didn't. We had our differences, but I'm not a murderer. It's true, Inspector. I was with Stella the whole time. She couldn't have done it. Yeah, we'll just see about that. Now, the next victim was... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Him? Who had the audacity to poison Paris Hilton's lipstick? Well, it certainly wasn't me, even though I do have a PhD in chemistry and cosmetics. That's beside the point. Killing Paris Hilton is forgivable, but her poor little doggy too? Oh, the world is an ugly place. So, who do you think done it? And which celebrity is next for the Christmas chop? Join us again for more Murder at Nile Manor!